subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lipakshi khurana here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 8th of December. Indian Defence Chief General Bipin Rawat and wife among 13 killed in chopper crash. Government's cruel measures crushing poor and economy, says Pakistan opposition leader Shehbaz on electricity price hike. And India's Foreign Secretary calls on Bangladeshi PM Hasina discusses forthcoming visit of President Kovind. And now for all the details, General Bipin Rawat, India's first Chief of Defence Staff, died on Wednesday after a military chopper crashed near the town of Kanur in southern Tamil Nadu state, killing 13 on board. General Rawat's wife travelling with him was also killed. One survivor is being treated for severe burns. Rawat was appointed as Chief of Defence Staff by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government in late 2019. The head of India's armed forces, General Bipin Rawat, was among 13 people killed on Wednesday when the military helicopter they were travelling in crashed, the Air Force said. They were en route from an Air Force base to a hillside military college in the southern state of Tamil Nadu when the Russian made Mi-17 V-5 helicopter came down near the town of Kunur. Only one of the 14 people on board survived and was in hospital with injuries. 63-year-old Rawat was appointed as India's first Chief of Defence Staff by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government in late 2019. The position was set up with the aim of integrating India's three military services, the Army, the Navy and the Air Force. PM Modi said he was deeply saddened by Rawat's death. A true patriot, he greatly contributed to modernizing our armed forces and security apparatus, the Prime Minister said. In a tweet, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh called Rawat's death an irreparable loss to our armed forces and the country. An infantryman with over four decades of military service, Rawat served along India's border with China, Jammu and Kashmir region and on a United Nations mission in Africa before taking charge of the Indian Army in late 2016. And three terrorists were killed in an encounter with security forces in Shopian district in India's Jammu and Kashmir on Wednesday morning. The operation was still underway till the last reports came in. The terror-related incidents have seen a significant surge in the region in the past few months. Security agencies blame Pakistan-based terror outfits for a spate in terror activities. As many as 133 terrorists, including many top commanders, have also been neutralized this year in the region, Jammu and Kashmir police said last month. Three terrorists were neutralized in an encounter with security forces in Shopia district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Wednesday. According to police, the gun battle broke out in the early hours of the Wednesday at the Chak Cholan area of Shopia. The gunfight started after a joint team of the police and the army cordon of the area and launched a search operation on the basis of specific information about the presence of terrorists. The search operation turned into an encounter after the terrorists opened fire at the security personnel. One terrorist was killed in the morning and the other two killed later in the day, Kashmir Zone Police confirmed in a tweet. Search operation was still underway till the last reports came in. The terror-related incidents, including civilian killings, have seen a significant surge in Kashmir Valley in the past few months. As many as 133 terrorists, including many top commanders, have also been neutralized this year in the region, Jammu and Kashmir police said last month. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan continues to receive flak over rising inflation in the cash-strapped country. Reacting sharply over the increase of nearly 4 rupees in the electricity tariff for the consumers in Karachi City, PMLN President and Leader of the Opposition in the National Assembly, Shehbaz Sharif, said that the government's cruel measures were crushing the poor and the economy. Pakistan's opposition leader in the National Assembly and president of PMLN party Shabazz Sharif slammed Prime Minister Imran Khan's PTI-led government 
Over the recent increase in electricity tariff in the country amid an unprecedented rise in inflation. Shahbaz said that on rupees 4 increase in electricity tariff for Karachi city is a proof that PTI government has become a slave to the International Monetary Fund. Earlier in October IMF asked Pakistan to increase electricity tariffs by rupees 1.4 per unit to curb the surge in circular debt. The tariff was increased after the government withdrew rupees 72 billion subsidy which was provided to multiple categories of power consumers. The opposition leader stated the value of immovable property increased from rupees 35 to 700% which would further curtail businesses activities in the country and further slow down the economy. Sare 3 saal mein jo inhone blunders kiye hain economy ke hawale se aur jo tabahi ki hai chahe wo qarzon ki mad mein ho aaj mehangai ke hawale se Pakistan दुनिया की फहरिस्त में तीसरे नंबर पे है यानी तीसरा मुल्क है जहां पर हाईएस्ट लेवल ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन है फूड इन्फ्लेशन आपका جنوبی ایشیا میں جتنے بھی ممالک ہیں ہم سب سے اگے ہیں مہنگائی میں The Pakistan government has been grappling with the record all-time high inflation that is particularly hitting the country's poor and middle classes. According to report by Pakistan Bureau of Statistics the inflation rate in Pakistan in November increased from 9.2 to 11.5%. And the shocking and deadly mob attack on Sri Lankan national Priyanka Kumar accused of blasphemy in Eastern Pakistan last week so intense condemnation by rights watchdogs drew reactions from politicians celebrities and journalists around the world. Addressing a condolence reference for Priyanka, Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan on Tuesday highlighted the criticality of role models in any society and pledged to punish anyone using religion to commit cruelty. Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan on Tuesday said anyone committing any cruelty in the name of the Holy Prophet will be punished after a mob killing of a Sri Lankan national Priyanka Kumara in Sialkot shocked the nation. Khan made the statement during an event to commemorate the death of Priyanka who was lynched, tortured and burned by a mob of factory employees in Pakistan's Punjab province for alleged blasphemy on December 3. ये आज वाज कर दूं कि मैंने ये फैसला किया है कि अब से जिन्होंने भी दीन को इस्तेमाल किया और खास तौर पे रहमतुल्लाह अमीन Some of Pakistan's most renowned clerics visited the Sri Lankan High Commission in Islamabad to offer condolences and announced that the forthcoming Friday will be observed as the day of condemnation. Mob killings over accusation of blasphemy are frequent in Muslim majority Pakistan where the crime can carry the death sentence. We all uh, with the scholars of Islamic Sharia throughout the country have uh, gathered here and met his excellency to express our grief express our condolence express of our solidarity with uh, Sri Lanka because Sri Lanka is our brother country while the Punjab government has arrested 132 people including 27 main accused so far priyanka's family seeks justice from pakistan Meanwhile the remains of Priyanka reached his residence in Sri Lanka's Ganemulla town for final rites on Wednesday. And moving on Britain's handling of the evacuation of vulnerable Afghans from Kabul after the Taliban seized power in August was dysfunctional and chaotic a foreign officer whistleblower said. Top officials from Britain's foreign office on Tuesday defended the evacuation mission. The government has repeatedly defended its airlift operation against criticism that Britain potentially left thousands of eligible afghans behind after being caught out by how quickly the afghan government fell top officials from britain's foreign office on tuesday defended the evacuation of vulnerable people from afghanistan after a whistle blower described the mission as chaotic and dysfunctional in written evidence to parliament's foreign affairs committee rafael marshall a former foreign office desk officer said the process for prioritizing who to evacuate as arbitrary and dysfunctional 
Marshall estimated that only 5% of Afghan nationals who applied to flee under one UK program received help. He said that at one point he was only person monitoring the invox. Facing the committee on Tuesday, Philip Barton, the most senior official in the Foreign Office, said he did not recognize the large numbers in Marshall's evidence. There was never an application process, so I don't recognize the, the very large numbers. Uh, you were talking about the numbers we had in our minds were the Arab scheme, the British nationals, and then a decision, a decision when we realized we had capacity, we bring some of the most vulnerable, which, which we did. Marshall also said capacity which could have been used to process people was used to evacuate animals from a shelter. Both the Justice Secretary Dominic Raab and Prime Minister Boris Johnson disputed this, saying the welfare of animals had not been put above individuals. Britain's ambassador to Afghanistan at the time, Laurie Bristow, told the committee the chartered flight that took the animals was only allowed to land after evacuations were complete. Bristow told the hearing he was absolutely mortified about documents left at the embassy which contained the details of Afghans who had helped Britain and allies. He said those who were identified had been subsequently evacuated out of the country. As the Taliban took power in August, the United States, the UK and other countries rushed to evacuate Afghans who had worked with Western forces and others at risk of violent reprisals. Britain managed to airlift 15,000 people out of the country in two weeks and the government says it has since helped more than 3,000 others leave Afghanistan. India's Foreign Secretary Harshwardhan Shringla on Wednesday called on Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and discussed the forthcoming visit of President Ramnath Kovind on the occasion of 50 years of Victory Day and liberation of Bangladesh. During the meet, Shringla conveyed the greetings of Prime Minister Narendra Modi to Sheikh Hasina on the 50th anniversary of Maitri Divas, also known as India-Bangladesh Friendship Day. Prime Minister Hasina said Bangladesh-India can be benefited by generating hydropower in Nepal and Bhutan as it will be both clean energy and cheap. The Bangladeshi Prime Minister and India's Foreign Secretary also discussed small issues across the border between the two countries, among others. Shringla appreciated the economic progress of Bangladesh during the pandemic. Shringla arrived on a two-day visit to Dhaka on Tuesday, a day after India and Bangladesh celebrated Maitri Divas or Friendship Day in 18 cities worldwide, including Dhaka and New Delhi, to commemorate their close ties over the past 50 years. Maitri Divas is observed on December 6th to mark India, recognizing the newly formed country Bangladesh in 1971 after liberation from Pakistan. Archery has always been the most popular sport in India's picturesque Himalayan desert of Ladakh. In collaboration with the Archery Association of Ladakh, two colleges have started a 15-day archery coaching camp for the students, which is currently underway. Authorities say the students are being trained in all the archery techniques because it is being taken. A 15-day long archery teaching camp for college students began on Tuesday in India's picturesque Himalayan desert of Ladakh region. The camp is organized by Elysia Jordan Memorial College and Government Degree College, Khalsi, in collaboration with Archery Association of Ladakh. Locally known as Dafang, archery has always been the most popular sport in Ladakh. The trainers are teaching these budding archers various techniques like elastic strings, therapens to help them participate in the national and international arena and prepare them towards future tournaments. हमारा जो आर्ची जो लदाखों के एक खून में ब्लड में हमारा आर्ची एक इस गेम को गेम को पसंद करते हैं आर्ची को तो उस हिसाब से मॉडर्न आर्ची हम इनको सिखा रहे हैं तो अभी हम कोचिंग दे रहे हैं बच्चे बहुत उत्साह है बहुत शौक है। Braving the freezing cold temperature, students were seen enthusiastically participating in the camp. अभी आप सब ने देखा है बहुत दिल से मेहनत करके इतने ठंड भरे मौसम में जदू जहाद करके अपने टेक्निक्स को अपने टैलेंट को बच्चों में देने की कोशिश कर रहा है तो हम सभी को ये कहना चाहूँगा आने वाले सालों में हमें आर्चरी में बहुत स्कोप है। Competitions are usually held at the end of the harvest season in almost every part of Ladakh. The young archers are now preparing to participate in the upcoming Kelo India Games, which will be held in February next. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.